This is a presentation and a software demonstration of IPS's tool control, our tool tracking and process control system. To start, I would like to give you an overview of the three distinct software modules of tool control. It all starts with the base module, and the base module in essence is the digital inventory that tracks your tools by serial number throughout their useful life in the can plant and even through regrinds in vendor facilities uh, outside of the building. So it tracks your inventory and tracks your tools. In addition to that, the base module gives you a very powerful reporting engine and we'll be looking more in detail into the reporting towards the end of this presentation. The second module is the production module and this is where we pull body maker data specifically stroke count and downtime events. And by combining this production data to the tooling data, we're able to do things like give you better understandings of the cans made per tool, as well as giving you more accurate tooling costs as a cost per thousand cans. Eventually, as we start collecting more of this data, the tool control team will be releasing more functionality of the system to allow you to do predictive tooling changes based on trends at your plant. The third module is the can weight module. And so the focus of this module is to give you a tighter can weight distribution, not putting more metal into the trim as absolutely necessary. And the way that we do this is that we pull QA data specifically the can weight and can wall thickness. Now that is mid wall and top wall or thin wall, thick wall. And by having these two pieces of, or three pieces of data front and center, when you're making tooling changes, it allows you to focus more on having the correct QA specifications and making tooling changes to keep those QA specs in line. Now, the tool control system, if nothing else, it does one main important thing, which is eliminating human error. We recommend connecting the tool control system to your precision gauge. IPS, of course, sells the ToolScan 2.0. And in this short video, I want to demonstrate how connecting these two systems will eliminate human error. So it all starts with a scan. So we have 2D data matrix barcodes on your tooling and the tool scan system that measures your tooling is able to pick up the serial number from that barcode. So you start with scanning it. After that, you place that into the tool scan 2.0 and you go ahead and measure this. And now the measurement that comes out with five or six significant figures is automatically sent to the tool control digital database. So again, it's as simple as scanning the tool, clicking to measure the tool. And after that measurement is complete, we eliminate writing on a Sharpie on that tool for your primary measurement and instead sending that data over to the tool control digital database. We've also realized over the years that regardless of how powerful a piece of software is or how great the reporting engine is, if the people that are intended to use the software are not using it, the data will never make it into the system and you'll never use the software to its full functionality. So data collection must be easy. We've worked for months with body maker operators and in tool rooms to make the process of changing out tools by a body maker operator using the tool control system as easy as possible. And in this short video, I'm going to show you how that looks. Now, it all starts with an easy login. And so we've integrated a RFID badge scanner into the software. And so we'll go ahead and use the current employee badges and based on the employee's role in the company, 
will log them into the tool control to their user level. If it's a body maker operator, of course, it's going to be to the body maker operator level, which brings them directly to what they need to do, which is make a tool change. So it's going to allow them to select the body maker, and we do this with a touch screen monitor, making this as easy as possible. And after that, all they do is scan the tools into the system. And the software, we'll go into this a bit later, has a lot of smart features. One of them being we load the progression charts into the software. So that is associated with each individual body maker and each individual line. And so when you scan the tools, into the software, it knows automatically that in this case, it was a second and third ironing die. So this simply makes the body maker operator's job as simple as possible, as few steps as possible. The final thing is going to be selecting a reason of why that tooling change was made. And after that, it automatically logs them out, minimizing another step, and they can go ahead and start making that actual tooling change at the body maker. Now we say that we can make tooling changes in under 30 seconds. If it's a single tooling change, it's likely even less than that 30 second benchmark. Now let's jump right into the software demo. We wanna show you a few things about the tool control software and we'll do this in three distinct levels. We'll start with the operator level, that's the body maker operator. Then we'll go into the tool room manager or tool room supervisor level. And finally, we'll go into the administrator level, which will show you all of the reports. First, let's start with the body maker operator level. As mentioned previously, the login screen can be bypassed using a RFID badge scanner. Once they log in, what we do is we work with each can plant to create a custom configuration of the number of body makers you have, the number of lines you have. And what we try to do is visually represent that exactly as it is laid out in your plant to make it as easy as possible. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and look at body maker number one on line 2A. This is the tool change screen, and I want to give you a bit of orientation on this screen. First off, at the top left, you see that we are selected at body maker number one. At the top right, we see what the current can size is that we are using. And then again, on the left hand side, we see the punch, redraw, first, second, and third ironing die. And then here we have shown what sizes we currently have in the body maker. The big, black, bold numbers, those are the sizes that are currently in the body maker. But there's other data that is super useful for body maker operators. And let's start with the number on top of the black number. This shows the deviation away from the progression line that you are currently running. Um, and to illustrate that a bit further, I'm gonna actually bring up the progression chart, which is easily accessible to the body maker operator by clicking this button right here. So this is the actual progression that the body maker and that line is currently running. And so we see that this line highlighted is the line that we are running on body maker number one. And for the punch, you see we're at 73.039 as indicated here for the punch. And the numbers on top of these, let's go down to the third ironing die. Currently we're running 73.319, which as you see, that's 0.001 below the current progression line. So it gives the body maker operator a very easy way to see where each individual tool is running relative to the progression line. The gray number below is obviously the progression line number. So 73.320 on the third die here is the number that is on that line. Another piece of useful information is that it shows you how long each individual tool has been in the body maker. For this example, we have 158 days. Obviously that is a, a bit extreme, but this would be live data from your plant. 
The other thing that we do is we track every single tooling event that the can maker finds important. So one is obviously if you're going to be cross hatching or for steel can lines polishing the punch. So we give you an easy button right here to log that punch cross hatch. And what that does is it morphs it and aligns it with a timestamp and also it kind of resets the uh, stroke count. So it will tell you eventually how many cans that punch has produced since the last crosshatch. So as we previously saw, if we scan two tools into the system, as we saw in the video, it's automatically gonna put those into the correct slots. That is of course, because the digital database knows the serial number and the size associated with it. And as we just saw, we have the progression chart loaded into the software. So based on the size, it knows exactly that the tools are second and third ironing dies. But what happens if we try to scan in a tool that is completely out of range for this particular body maker? Let's go ahead and try that. And if we scan that, it'll say this tool is outside of the scope of the selected progression. So we have built in some fail safes that allow you to uh, give information to the body maker operator to keep them from making bad decisions, putting in incorrect tooling into the body maker. Finally, we'll go to the bottom right here to the history tab. Now, although the full reporting is not accessible to body maker operators, we do want to give them some information to uh, allow them to get a better picture of what's going on with their body makers. So if we click on this button here, we'll see this screen right here. Again, the top portion here shows exactly the situation of what is happening inside of that body maker. We show the sizes, we show the individual serial numbers, and we also show the deviation from the progression line as we just described a few minutes earlier. Another nice thing that we see is the cans per tool uh, since this punch has been put into the body maker. We also see that for the redraw die, and we use some colors to indicate uh, different types of changes. So green means this was the last tooling event that happened inside of the body maker. Green represents a tool change. So in this example, the first, second, and third ironing die were changed, and it looks like this recently happened because there are zero cans produced since that tooling change by Todd, and it shows that the change reason was that the progression was changed. Now, if you go and click on the history button, we won't do this right now, but clicking on this will show you the last 10 events that happened inside of this body maker. Green being tooling changes, and then this one right here shows purple, which is either a crosshatch or a punch specific, or a crosshatch and a polish specific to that punch. Finally, if we come back to this screen and scan in a tool or enter in a serial number as we did in this case, and let's say that that tool is not in the database. Now, this could be a tool that was simply missed in the upload process or a tool that came back from a vendor and somehow missed the workflow of entering the digital database. So we have built into the workflow ways to handle tools that are not in the database in regular operations. So let's say that you're a body maker operator and you take a ironing die out, a third ironing die, and we type in this serial number. You click enter and it says the tool was not found in the database and immediately after this, it will bring up this screen here. So it is going to already have the serial number that we entered in here. And the only thing we'll need to do now is enter the size of that tool. And so entering those two pieces of information and clicking enter will do two things. First off, it'll create a profile in the digital database for this serial number. So automatically that tool is in the database and the next time you enter the serial number or scan it, 
it will appear with its, with its full history. The second thing is it will automatically insert it into the body maker, which was the purpose of what the body maker operator was doing. So it does two things really in one step uh, in the regular workflow of the body maker operator. So that's the end of the body maker operator software demo. Now we're going to move to the tool room level. And the tool room level is meant for two main things. It is looking at the big picture of the tooling inventory and doing this specifically for planning purposes. Planning whether it is ordering new tools, whether it is ordering regrinds from outside vendors, or whether it is planning the regrind schedule internally, or whether you are planning to change an entire tool pack and change where your body maker is going to be running uh, as far as your progression charts concerned. So this screen that we're looking at right here comes from the progression tab up top here. Now, using tool control, you'll get very comfortable with seeing this progression style view. And in this particular view, we're going to see that this is the progression table, the 73 by 401. We're running a 73 millimeter diameter steel can. And so this is your entire progression chart, and it shows you where your body makers are running on this progression chart. We've also included some colors to give you an idea of the inventory. So next to each slot, so here we have punches, we have redraw dies, first, second, and third ironing dies. And the second column next to the size is the quantity of inventory ready for production. Yellow is zero, and then the pink color is low volume. So if I'm looking at this, a few takeaways that I have is that body maker number one, for example, is well supported for the ironing dies, at least the ones that are typical for changing the third and the second ironing dies. So of the current sizes, we're in the uh, white, which is plenty of inventory, or orange, which is enough, and then the size below, we're well supported there as well where body maker number four, if we look at the second ironing die, we do not have any remaining on the shelf for the current size nor the sizes below. So this type of a view gives the tool room supervisor a lot of information of how to support your current body maker needs and also how to plan for future tooling changes once the tool pack needs to be changed completely. Now, we can see the inventory in many different ways. I won't go into all of them into this software demo, but if we go ahead and click on the inventory or the tools and inventory tabs up on the left-hand side of the screen, we come up with this view. I'll walk you through a workflow of how this could be useful. So let's say a body maker operator just pulls out a third ironing die, for example. They go ahead and go to this screen and they scan that tool. Automatically in this portion of the screen, we see this is the serial number and we see that this is that sized tool. On the left hand side of the screen, your 73.302 appears right here. And this is a inventory view. So we're gonna see that we have two that are on the shelf ready for production. Uh, and we just pulled one out, so there are not any in production. And then 11 are unavailable, so those would either be out for regrind or somewhere else in the workflow, whether it's to be remeasured, inspected, or something else. And so it also shows you the inventory above and below, uh, so we can easily see a useful view of the inventory as it relates to a specific tool. Now, since we scanned this tool, we can go down here and look at specific tooling details for that serial number. On this screen here, we have a very useful tab or, or table, which is the size history table. Over the course of the life of that individual tool, this is going to show the sizes of that tool. So the original size was this, and once it gets inserted into the body maker, the number of cans produced will increase. 
eventually it's reground to a new size, measured, and then we have a new size, and then eventually we're going to have a new can count. So you can see exactly how many cans were produced per each individual size in that tool's life. Further details of tools is we can see each individual activity and location change, including who made that location change throughout the life. So you can track that tool from incoming from the very first time to a vendor, to going to inventory, out to a body maker, then the regrind bin, reground, remeasured, re-inventoried, and that for various cycles throughout its life. The final screen I want to show you is the tool pack screen. And the tool pack screen allows the pre-planning of tool pack changes into body makers. So the scenario is that let's say the body maker number one is going to be needing a tool pack change, a brand new tool pack at the beginning of the next shift. So the tool room operator can go ahead and look at this screen right here they're going to be checking the correct can size and the correct progression table. And again, this view here is that progression chart and the inventory that is available. So they can scan this up and down for a good line to start running this on, one that is well supported all the way uh, throughout the potential uh, tool pack's life. In this example, we don't have any redraw dies as indicated by that zero in parentheses, but let's imagine that we did and we've selected a nice line on that progression chart. At that point, what the tool room operator will do is they'll go to the physical inventory shelves and then they'll pull off any one of these four available punches and then they'll pick a redraw first, second, third, and ironing die. Again, it does not matter which one they pick up off of inventory because they'll bring them all over to the tool control station and they'll scan the serial numbers. And that will put those serial numbers into these slots and then we'll name that tool pack. For example, today's date, body maker number one, and we'll save it. At that point, the tool room operator can go ahead and put that physical tool pack in a staging area, and then eventually when the next shift comes in, they can pick up that physical tool pack, they'll bring it over to the tool control station, and all they need to do is scan the punch. And since that digital tool pack was created, all of the tools will automatically be loaded into the system, and they'll go ahead and click on the progression option that indicates that they're changing the line of their progression or loading a new tool pack. So making it very easy to pre-plan and it also makes it easy for the body maker operator to execute. Finally, we're going to go into the administrative level reports and these reports, although there are many more, I want to focus on three reports that are very useful and show how the data from the tooling as well as the body maker production data can be used together for very useful uh, root cause analysis or troubleshooting techniques. So the first report that I want to show you is the tools by body maker. And what this report does is we've selected a specific time range, a week of time that we want to look at body maker line number 2A. And we want to see the tooling usage for that week on the line. So we're going to be looking at body maker 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And what we see is, first off, the number of total cans produced during that week for each of these body makers. And then we're also going to see each individual tooling change for each of these body makers. If we come over to this column, we see our total die changes for each of the body maker. And then here is the very useful metric that combines your tooling data and your production data. And it gives you something that is the number of cans per individual ironing die. And so what you're looking for here, in essence, is uh, something that looks off. So uh, typically, we may see that a single body maker is giving you 
a, f a lot fewer cans per ironing die. So in this example, body maker number one has 128,000 cans on average per ironing die, where the rest of the body makers are higher than that. So this gives you an indicator that if you had a high tooling usage during that week, that you may want to take a look at body maker number one as the cause for the elevated tooling changes. So now that you know that you need to focus on an individual body maker, we'll walk you through another report. And this report is the tool changes by reason. So as we showed you, when a body maker operator is making a tooling change, they have all of those red buttons. And those buttons are the, ch the reason that they made that tooling change. So let's say, for example, the problematic body maker was number three. And so we can actually see why the tooling changes were made during that week's time. And here it looks like of the 18 tooling changes, 15 of them were because of scratches. So now you not only know which body maker to focus on, but you know what is happening in that body maker that caused those tooling changes. So now you have a very focused thing that you can do on your floor to fix the problem of elevated tooling usage. So when talking about elevated tooling usage, it's typically one of two high level causes. One is the machine or the equipment, but the other one is users. So the final report I wanna show you is tool changes by user. And so here it's the same week's time. We're taking a look at each of our operators and how many total tooling changes that they made. And so in this example, Jim T looks like he made 33 tooling changes compared to a lot or you know many fewer for the other operators. And so now as a management, we can go and have a talk with Jim and maybe give him some more training, give him some better guidance on how to make more effective tooling changes as opposed to just grabbing maybe a stack of third ironing dies and throwing them at the problem. So that is the conclusion of the tool control software presentation and demo. If you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to contact us through our website, email, or our phone number. Thank you.